It's the start of another week, and it's the perfect time to learn something new. Welcome to class time. We are starting out with English language, and today I'll be demonstrating how to extend ideas effectively with the single dash. I am Sherlyn Woodburn. Let's begin our lesson. When you think about the word dash, more than likely, you're considering fast movement, such as the 60-yard dash, or someone is moving very fast, dashing around the corner, right? That's true. Dash can mean something like that. Or if you are baking something, a dash of nutmeg, for example, but more than likely, the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear dash is not the punctuation mark. That is how creative language is. You know, there are so many meanings to the same word. Today, we are going to explore the uses of the dash. It's a very exciting mark. But before we go into our lesson, we are going to revise our CSEC objectives. We should be able to explain meaning conveyed through punctuation and paragraphing. Remember that organizing our ideas effectively are dependent on specific punctuation marks, which we call generally mechanics. Draw valid conclusions and inferences from information presented and use appropriate diction. You know, when we are creating our expressions, dictions, diction comes first, and then the punctuation mark is going to show us how it is to be read, and suitable punctuation, paragraphing to convey meaning clearly and with facility. And we are going to go into a revision exercise. Remember that we did a lesson on parenthesis. Parenthesis. And in that lesson, we used two dashes called the double dash. So let us see the connection between the single dash and the double dash before we go into the fuller part of our lesson today. Remember what we said about parenthesis? That parenthesis is the name that we give to a thought that we insert in a sentence. And we can indicate the inserted thought with two dashes. We also, in that lesson, looked at commas, okay? And we also looked at the two marks that you tend to call brackets, which are really called parentheses. So let's look at our definition. Parenthesis, a word or phrase inserted as an explanation or afterthought in writing, usually marked off by brackets, dashes, or commas. Parentheses, a pair of round brackets. So you do call them brackets. These, okay, they are one parenthesis and two parentheses. So we saw that we would use the double dashes to indicate an inserted thought in a sentence, and we did an illustration. Mm, very interesting picture right here. And the illustration that we had used was the idea of a sandwich. Now, this part and this part 
That part represents um, the sentence. So if you were to take this out, you'd have two slices of bread, okay? The bread represents the original sentence. And the filling that you put between the, um, the bread, okay? That is the additional thought that makes a sentence much more interesting. You can just imagine from this illustration how much more um, interesting it is to sink your teeth into this. So the concept of parenthesis is in the sandwich. The important thing in the concept is that whatever is inserted in or between the bread, and bread there is um, connotative, it could mean bun, okay, biscuit, two, uh, you know, um, two crackers and you put something between, anything that forms the base, we call it the bread. Okay then, makes a difference. The bread represents the original thought or sentence. The double dashes illustrate the inserted thought. So, you know, when you are doing something and it is giving you trouble, you can sketch the idea. That's one sure way of helping you to come to terms with what you are doing. So if you ever get confused about what is parenthesis in a sentence, remember this idea of the sandwich where anything you put to enhance the sandwich is an additional bit of information. So the parenthesis helps you to express yourself more. Someone is reading and wondering maybe something about what is read. You can preempt a person who is reading what you write by inserting a thought you think might be useful to the person in the sentence that you're writing. And that thought is called a parenthesis. Okay, so you may also refer to the use of the double dash as showing an interruption in the sentence or the main thought. So let us continue to look at more in revising. So here are some examples to help cement the idea some more. So, example number one, it should be one, two, three. If the human appendix becomes inflamed, it has to be taken out fast by what is nowadays a simple operation. Let's look at sentence one. If you are going to use the idea of the sandwich, which part of this sentence is the original sentence. How would you read it? If the human appendix becomes inflamed, it has to be taken out by what is nowadays a simple operation. That's the original thought. That's just the brain. But to enhance and to the dash here now with the inserted word fast brings urgency to the thought. Okay, so the two dashes, dash, I'm going to put something here to let you get a, a better understanding of what I'm saying. So you open, put the thought in, close, and you continue. So when you are using the two dashes in the sentence, the two dashes mark off this extra thought that you place in the sentence. This sentence says, even at that early hour, it was not yet six o'clock. He was immediate, he was immaculately dressed. Now, what is the main thought? Even at that early hour, he was immaculately dressed. Then here comes the two dashes now to insert something about the situation. It was not yet six o'clock. So this is a parenthesis in the sentence as this word is a parenthesis. So it could be one word 
or a whole clause or a long phrase. Let's read the, the last sentence. How could you speak to him, your own father, in such a way? The main part or the original thought would be what? How could you speak to him in such a way? But to give clarity and to somehow expound on the idea, you insert your own father. So then we have a parenthesis right here. And to show parenthesis, you put the first dash before and the second dash after. We are doing this because today we are still on dash. And in mechanics, we have double dashes and we have the single dash. Let us go and continue what we are doing. All right. What is a single dash used to do? The double dash marks off an additional thought in a sentence or enclose the interruption in the sentence. And remember that many of these punctuation marks are versatile. Remember that the, the single dash could sometimes be taken out and you put, for example, a colon, which we are going to look at later on. Now, what is a single dash used to do? According to the Concise English Dictionary, dash in grammar and mechanics. A horizontal stroke in writing, marking a pause or to represent omitted letters or words. It can mark a pause or represent omit omitted letters or words. Let us continue. Hmm, time for thought. Here's my little man, busy thinking. Okay, first class work for today. Identify which of the sentences below which illustrates the dash. One or two. All right, one says, there was only one other customer, an untidy middle-aged person with a pair of binoculars slung over his shoulders. And number two sentence says, there was only one other customer, an untidy middle-aged person with a pair of binoculars slung over his shoulders. And we See the highlighting of the marks. One is here and the other is here. In terms of the single dash, which sentence is correct in the usage? Number two. Number two. And I am going to shortly speak to you about a problem that you do from time to time when you're using your word processor, come into it very soon. Number two, what is this? A hyphen. And sometimes you use hyphens instead of dash, okay? Or dashes, depending on what you're writing. So this is the dash, this is the hyphen. How do you make this mistake? How do you make the mistake of using a hyphen for a dash? Let's go to the whiteboard. When you're using your device, of course you know that at the top where you have these keys with the numbers and marks, you have a key looking like this, right? Yes, and depending on what you want to, to come on the page, you would use the shift key. Some of you, 
depending on the device, it's, it's an arrow that, you know, upward, pointing upward. You would press the shift key if you wanted the one above. Or you would just tap on it if you wanted this one. Notice that the two marks are not the same length. What am I doing? I am showing you what to do not to create in your work a hyphen when you ought to be using a dash. It's not the same. And that's an error that you need to fix. So let's go again. So you're typing. And if you tap on this, you will get this one. And if you press the shift key, you'll get this one. So how do I avoid using a hyphen when I need to use a dash? Let us say you're typing this sentence. I did not eat the orange. It was sour. You want to use a dash to explain why. Because automatically, the single dash is used to clarify a thought. One of its functions is to do that. So you, you, you really want the person to, to more fully understand what you are saying and to process more fully. So you just dash. It's OK when you're writing. You just dash and continue. On the machine, something else happens. So when you are typing, let us say you type, I did not eat the orange. And you go up here. If you do it once, you're going to get this, not the longer one. So when you're typing, in order to avoid getting a hyphen, which this is going to give you, you, I did not eat the orange, tap, tap, and continue. It was sour. No space bar until you finish the word it. Automatically, the word processor will give you this. This is what you really want. But many of you, you just tip this and you continue. So you get one. And then it was sour, which is a hyphen and not a dash. So two hyphens is equal to a dash. Ha. Ah. Mathematics, uh, you know, English language, you know, it is not so divorced from mathematics because you learn to be analytical and you learn to be critical. Okay, then, in analyzing concepts. So pay attention. And when you get your arms um, strong in critical thinking, then you can tackle your mathematical problems so much better. Okay, so two hyphens make a dash. Should I do it again? All right. When you are typing. So you type, I did not eat the orange. And you tap, tap. It was sour. Automatically, your word processor will connect the two and give you one. Try it. Okay, then let's go back to this, the board screen. So he smiled again. Tap, tap on that key. You get two short ones. Press the hyphen key twice and continue typing. He smiled again, a cold, hard smile. The software will close the space. A hyphen is half the size of a dash. So do not put the hyphen in your work when you really mean to use the dash. Let us continue. We are now going to go into some exercises to practice now on the single dash. Analyzing the contextual effects 
of the single dash. When you are writing, you must be, be conscious of the fact that the person you are writing to, the reader, is dependent upon you to make whatever it is that you are saying very clear. So the, the, the dash can be used as a stylistic feature or it can be used to make communication clearer, in which case both end up being communication. So then, one of the first uses of the single dash is to mark a pause or to represent omitted letters or words. Mark a pause or to represent omitted letters or words. So look at this verse. This comes from one of your poems on the English B syllabus and it's by Elmer Mitchell as Stone's Throw. We shouted out, we have got her. Here she is. It's her all right. We caught her. There she was. Ah, here comes the dash. Why do you think the poet put the dash right here? The poet did not conclude the thought. The poet has left you to conclude the thought. This, this spectacle, this, this is an image that I have created for you. So the poet is saying, there she was. Huh? It's open. I have left you in writing to decide what to think. Omitted thought. Dramatic. Purposeful. Dash. It is inviting the reader consider the spectacle okay then and do you know um, you have done this poem okay what is the context of this poem okay the woman who was brought to Jesus okay okay and they wanted to stone her remember that story yes very creative poem well profound poem okay then so let's move forward Classwork number two now, under these analyses. The other use of the single dash is when adding an explanation or introducing a list instead of a colon. Remember that I said earlier in the introduction of the lesson that these punctuation marks, they are versatile. So you could use a colon in this context of the single dash if you didn't want to use a dash. So you have options when you are using punctuation marks. Many times you have options. So here is a sentence. I found the exam extremely difficult. Half the questions were impossible. Study the sentence. I found the exam extremely difficult. You could put a full stop. You didn't have to explain anything, okay? But, but somehow, you, you may have heard the prompt in your brain to say, why? Why are you quarreling about the exam? And you extend the idea. You give more to the the reader, half the questions were impossible. So you have given an explanation. When the person is reading, your reading, your anticipation of their reading makes your work 
so much more interesting. It is time for a usual break, but stay with us. We have a lot more after this. Welcome back to class time. If you're just joining us, this is English language, and we've been looking at extending ideas effectively with the single dash. Let's continue. So we have been looking at analyzing contextual effects of the single dash, and we looked at the first usage, marking a pause, or to represent omitted letters or words. And we went on to the second usage when adding an explanation or introducing a list, and we can use that instead of a colon. All right then? So we are going to do another one, another function. We can use the single dash in our writing before and after thought in, inf in informal English. So, you know, um, you can be speaking to your friend. You do not have to be formal all the time. Formality has its occasion. Okay, then <laughs> you don't have to be stiff with your friends. Okay, so you are speaking and Someone makes a comment and you reply, I sent my cousin an invitation, at least I think I did. Okay, so what, what, would, it, what would it be if it were formal? You would say, I think that I sent my cousin an invitation, but this is your friend. So you say, I sent my cousin an invitation, at least I think I did. Okay, so the main idea right here, you would end right here. I sent my cousin an invitation. But for some reason, you doubt yourself. You are so busy, maybe you don't even remember quite with certainty. So you said, oh, at least I think I did. Okay then, so you're writing a friendly email or, or you know, something friendly. You can also use the single dash to provide more information. And in this case, an afterthought, you want to add an afterthought to the thought that has gone before. So that's one of the, of the usages. So let's go to this one. We can use the single dash 
to create a dramatic pause, somewhat similar to A. And I'll just quickly take a look at A. A is the one with the, with the, the woman, okay, the poem. So I'll just quickly go there in a minute and return. But we'll just do this first. So she looked up and saw Phoebe with a lizard in her hand. Okay, so a dramatic pause. Now, because of the idea, so many persons don't like this idea. So um, you want to, 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 you know, really say that you don't expect that she would have it in her hand. That's what's so dramatic about the situation. An unexpected situation. You would expect her to have anything but a lizard in her hand. So you saw her with a lizard. So you would just hold it with a lizard in her hand. Dramatic pause. Now, when we looked at the verse, let's go back quickly to the verse with the woman. All right, then. See, that's also dramatic. Okay? There she was. And it's the thought, whatever you're going to think, she's a spectacle. It's wide open, and you're just waiting to see what happens next to the person. So it's a somewhat similar in a little way. The thought is unfinished, but also it is also dramatic. All right? So those are the usages of the single dash that we are going to look at today. And now we are going to go deeper now into our skills to do some analysis and look at style and usefulness of using the single dash. This one is from Once Upon a Time by Gabrielle Okara. Okay, then also on your CSEC English B syllabus. Now, you can be a better, you know, candidate in writing responses to your poetry. When you see the dash in a poem, it's a part of the overall idea of the poem. The dash did not appear in the poem by mistake. It's a deliberate insertion by the writer because the writer wants to do something to your mind when the dash goes there. Same thing that you should be doing. You deliberately put the dash in your writing to do something about the idea you are communicating. Following? So when you read poetry and you see a dash appear in a verse, the dash is a part of the, the style and it is very important to pay attention to the ideas being communicated by the dash. So let's go. Feel at home, come again. They say, and when I come again and feel at home, once, twice, there'll be no thrice. For then I find doors shut on me. Now this is one verse from the poem. Now let us get the context of, the, of it first. Very important. That's where the diction comes in and the paragraphing, okay? Well, this is a verse. So the, the speaker is given a situation in which originally, you know, um, persons have a way to say in Jamaica that when you go <laughs> abroad and um, you'll soon lose your welcome from some person's homes, especially if, um, you know, maybe um, you're not working or something, they get tired, some persons get tired of you easily. And they, they don't, <laughs> it wears off, the welcome wears off. Okay, so this is a situation in which the welcome wore off, okay? So the person's expressing it, um, the sense of difference and, and not being welcome. So it's flowing, okay? 
again and feel at home once, twice, but there'll be no thrice. For then I feel doors shut on me. So what is a dash doing here? It is giving you an extension of the situation. For then I find the door shut on me. You are no longer welcome. So you are using the dash right here. And a contrasting thought, something new to think about, the foregoing thought. Okay, remember the one we did about the, the foregoing afterthought? Okay then. So very important. The dash is very significant in that. So if you were writing about diction in, because diction and organization are the fundamentals of writing. Why would you need to put a dash if there were no words? So the dash works with the words, right? And so you would say that the speaker is showing you the contrasting pers perspective in the situation with that dash. So this one now. Now, this is an illustration. It is very reflexive in the sense that the dash is there speaking of itself. So you do story writing. And this is explaining something about writing the story. So here goes. You lean forward. I'm right here. At least you lean forward if you love a story. Uh, what's the difference between a, a story you, you can't put down the novel and one in which you're just laboring, trying to finish, you know? It's style. The style of the writer that makes you hold on to that novel and someone is calling you and you, you're not hearing. You are immersed in the novel. You can't wait to turn the next page. That's, that's style. The writer's style, the writer has a way to hold your mind. We can use the single dash to hold the mind of the person who's reading whatever you have written. So then, most of us do particularly if the story tells us of people in action or in conflict. And if it is told briskly, vividly, and with insight into the human heart. By the way, do you love with your heart or with your head? You love with your brain. <laughs> okay, I got you. Okay then, narration or storytelling is therefore a powerful method which, okay, by which to engage and hold the attention of listeners, readers as well. So here is the dash, a very important function so in writing a story, it is this little piece of this extract is telling us that we must be careful to hold the reader. And there are different things that we would do to get that done. Hold the attention of listeners. Then the dash readers as well. Why do you think the dash is right here? To expand on the fact that even though I have said listeners, someone might say, so what about when you're reading? When I'm reading, okay, I need to be immersed in reading as well, not just in being immersed in the, in the storytelling. So the, to make sure that the reader understands that when you are speaking of story, you are not just referring to persons who are listening. You mean readers as well. So you, you hasten, <laughs> the dash is hastening to, to reassure you that 
I also mean readers, okay? I am referring to listeners, but if it holds the listener, it will hold the reader because the same craftiness will hold the reader, okay? So the dash is hastening to give you confirmation that it's the same for both the listener and the reader, expanding, making you comfortable, answering an implied question in the mind of the person who is reading. All right, hope you're following. Let's go on to our next one. Still on narrative writing. So this one says, this extract says, in writing a news story, a report often begins with the conclusion, placing the main event in the opening paragraph called the lead. You know, you open with this big thing so that readers get the essentials up front. You know, sometimes when they're introducing the evening news, you, you, they hit you with the, in the leads, <laughs> okay? Similarly, in using an anecdote to explain something or to argue a point, you will want to tell readers directly what you think the story demonstrates. But in most other kinds of narration, whether fiction or nonfiction, the storyteller refrains from revealing the gist of the story. It's point right from at the beginning. That doesn't mean the story lacks a thesis, however. Far from it. So let's get this into context first. So the writer is saying when you're writing a new story, you can open strongly with something, you know, that is guaranteed to let the person want to find out what is coming next. It's a strategy to hold. What's the point of you writing something and nobody wants to read it? So you have to find a way to make the mind want to continue reading. So you open with a lead and you know, it grabs the mind. That's a strategy. But it is saying, if you do not open your story like that, it does not mean that the story has no main point, far from it. So that doesn't mean the story lacks a thesis, which is a main point, far from it, okay? So the person is stressing out uh, 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 here that do not think, okay? Pushing your mind not to consider that if the person doesn't write like this, it doesn't have a main point. So the dash is being used here to expand, extend the thought carry what I'm saying a little further with the dash, okay? All right, wonderful. All right, here's another one. This is a very dramatic use of the dash. Now this particular extract is from the creative writer, very known, Maya Angelou, you have heard of her, right? And she has a book called, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. So she is writing about her life. Growing up, you know, she's not a Jamaican, but we have our poems, her poems on the English B syllabus, and she's a great writer, and she's, an African by ethnic origin. So she fits into our psyche. And she is writing about a time when Joe Lewis was fighting, the brown bomber, he was fighting. And she's recounting the situation in which there was this fight. And she is writing and she uses a dash in the writing. And she says, 
she's listening to the radio and this is what the announcer is saying. The fight is all over, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the microphone over to the referee. Here he is. He's caught the brown bomber's hand. He's holding it up. Here he is. Then the voice, husky and familiar, came to wash over us. The winner. And still heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Lewis. <sighs> wow, excitement. Woo. Joe Lewis won again. You know, what's the function of the dash? It has us. <gasps> We can't see, but we are listening to hear if he won. And the dash, we are holding our breath. So she wants you to read it like that. She wants you to understand that when the announcer reaches this point, all thoughts cease at that moment. She wants to communicate and for you to understand the situation by the dash, okay? And the dash holds your thought dramatically. Okay, let's pause here for another set of messages. When we return, I'll pick up where we left off. Welcome back to Class Time, English Language. Our topic has been extending ideas effectively with the single dash. And we are now finishing up our lesson for today. So we were on this, okay, making a difference in your writing with the single dash. This makes a lot of difference. Because this is a, a bit of writing with a lot of excitement. And it would not be the same if the writer did not say to us, hold your breath. Okay? Hold your breath right here. Here it comes. Okay? So the dash is being used here dramatically and it is indicating to you the excitement, the, the tension that's built up. No words. No thought, the dash is saying. Hold every single thing before the announcement comes. So we can really do better with using the single dash. And one thing we have to remember in the use of the single dash is we want to use the single dash to influence thoughts. 
That's a function of writing. Influence thoughts. Let something come in the mind of the person who is reading your work by using the single dash. Okay then? Influence thoughts of the readers as you write. Evoke emotions with the dash. That's very emotional that we just did. And encourage active reading. Let me say it again. You want to use the dash to influence thoughts. Okay then? You, you also anticipate thoughts with the dash. Because someone may read something and they're asking why. So then, you could give an explanation because you anticipate their thoughts. And you dash and say the additional thing that you want to say. Evoke emotions, okay then? Prompt emotion to come to persons as you write. And encourage active reading. As we saw in that verse of the poem with the woman bending down, the dash was left hanging. No other word was in that particular verse. And so it, it is inviting all kinds of thoughts from you, the reader, to consider what the situation is that was presented. And of course, before I go into the last classwork for today, I would like to remind you, let's go back to the whiteboard. When you are typing, do not use a hyphen when you should be using a dash. Use the word processor, okay, effectively to create the dash. Two hyphens, Make a dash. So when you are typing, tap, tap, and just continue to the next word. The word processor is supposed to merge. I say supposed to. I do not know which one you are using. But mine, it just merges. We get a nice long mark. Okay then? And it creates the dash for you. All right. So let us go with one more challenge now before we complete. All right, then we looked at this already and then we are going to go and complete. Okay, so you write stories and you write per persuasive writing, right? In your English A exams and classwork. So then, here is a guideline in writing argument and persuasion. We looked at one with story writing a while ago, and now we're looking at argument and persuasion. Okay, it says, television news has a serious failing. Now, remember that when you're arguing, you have a view. You make a claim, then you want to convince someone to accept your, your, your claim. Okay then? But if you're using persuasion, you can appeal to the person's emotions. But if you're really into a hard argument, you better come with evidence and facts. All right then? That's why we have argument and persuasion. It's not the same strategies. You can appeal to the person's emotions, but you can appeal using hardcore evidence. So, television news is a serious failing, says someone. It show, it's show business. Unlike a newspaper, it's every image has to entertain the average beer drinker. To score high ratings and win advertisers, the visual medium favors the spectacular. Riots, tornadoes, air crashes. Now that satellite transmission invites live coverage, newscasters go for the fast-breaking story at the expense of thoughtful analysis. During the last two presidential elections, and you know that's not um, in Jamaica, 
The candidate sometimes deliberately packaged bad news so that it could not be distilled to a soundbite in on the evening news. And here comes the dash, and thus would not make the evening news at all. So the dash here, right down here, after making this point, opening with a claim, okay then, and you, you want, you're steadily trying to make um, the claim by giving some sort of backup to your claim, and you reach down here, okay, and you make this strong statement, and this is simply, similar to what the colon would do, giving the answer. So why it is packaged deliberately, okay, hidden, and thus would not make the evening news at all. So some parts of news it's saying um, are hidden and the sensational parts would come out to make persons want to watch the news. So this dash is giving the explanation to the foregoing sentence. Okay then? So this one, even when you're arguing and writing your persuasive um, essays, the dash is versatile. It belongs everywhere that it's needed. So then, use your single dash and pull the emotions of your readers. Encourage active reading. All right, and that's all we have time for today. For reinforcement, you can tune in to JNN at 5 p.m. for a repeat of today's lesson. And for 24-hour learning, there's a school time channel on One Spot Media. Join us tomorrow for more English language. You can also watch the lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. Until then, be good and be safe. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here to see our full videos on 